Today I will show you how to share Zoom recordings from a meeting or training in Confluence. What's possible with our Zoom app, some do's and don'ts for Zoom recordings and how to share them better. Hi, my name is Björn. I'm co-CEO at Resolution. We all know it. Often Zoom sessions are recorded and then nobody watches them. But why is this the case? Okay, sometimes recordings simply not shared, so that makes it really difficult for people to watch the recording. But also when it's shared, like via email or via Slack, it's difficult to find them, it's difficult to progress with them, especially for the upcoming work. So then you have your attendees, your audience, and you start with your meeting. You're sharing something, like a presentation or like in this example a confluence page. You discuss or highlight specific points, you direct them to specific points and you get immediately feedback from your audience. So and you handle maybe complete different points like onboarding of new employees, 30 day stock inventory or also your supplier contact list. Overall a very productive meeting. This short demo meeting of three minutes normally takes 30, 60 or in some hardcore cases 90 minutes and more. The length of the recording is also a problem and makes sharing difficult. Because often these recordings are not so exciting like a new Netflix series. But these recordings have superpowers like a Marvel hero. Somewhere hidden in the 90 minutes. My behavior when somebody sends me a 90 minute Zoom recording I simply will not watch it. Timing issue. Why should I watch 90 minutes to understand five important minutes as a summary? We identified this problem and created a Confluence and Jira app for it. But in this video, I will show you the Confluence app. So let's assume we have a Zoom meeting. You open your Zoom meeting, you need to adjust your microphone, you need to select the right camera. And essential for Zoom recordings is to start the recording. Our recommendation is to record to the cloud, which makes the sharing of the recording much easier later. Let's assume your meeting is finished and you start to create a Confluence page as a meeting protocol. But you don't want to write all the stuff down which was discussed. I will use the recording. I just mentioned the agenda and the attendees, so that makes it easier to find it later. The Zoom cloud recording processing is finished after a couple of minutes and the recording is available. You can now easily use our Zoom for Confluence app. You type slash Zoom in your Confluence page in the edit mode. This will open the app. It opens in a macro window and you have the possibility to connect your Zoom account but you can also copy and paste the Zoom recording URL in the text field. This allows people to share Zoom recordings when they don't have access to the Zoom account, where the recording is stored. Let's use the connection. I'm already logged in on my Zoom account, so I get a message, okay. If you are not logged in, a pop-up window will guide you through the login process with, the, uh, with Zoom. After the login, I can choose from 10 available recordings. These recordings are selected based on the date and the month around the date, so means all recordings in the past 30 days. And here I find my two minute demo recording. I just click on it and immediately I have the recording in the preview window. And now I can watch the whole recording. I can also jump to specific points, but that's not really magic so far. More importantly, I can search for a specific essential moment and create a chapter. I mean, I click on chapter at the actual position and name the starting point. Very often agenda points are used for this. So I use here onboarding process. Then I search for the next important part in the meeting. It's a meeting part with a 30 day stock inventory and I create also a chapter for this. The first chapter is the starting point of the video. So especially when you have a long introduction of 15 minutes, 
You can shorten the video already with the first chapter. Let's create another chapter. That's our supplier contact list chapter, chapter number three. The number of chapters is not limited, but I will stick with three for now. It's also possible to rename chapters or delete chapters. When I now close the macro, I have the Zoom recording in the conference page. I can adjust the size and simply publish the page. The Zoom recording is now available for all people who can access the Confluence page and they can easily go to the chapters. And the video starts playing at these specific markers. This workflow is cool for meetings, but it's amazing for tutorials and education sessions, especially because they are slow. So let's go to another meeting because sometimes Zoom recordings are password protected. Let's take this meeting for example. It's a little bit longer. I leave it public, but I choose now a password protection. Record it. The recording is now password protected and only people with a password can see the recording with a normal recording link. Means I need to share the password somehow. But we saw a conflict here. Asking for a password in a Confluence page? Really? In Confluence I have already a permission structure. And so I can limit the page access with these permissions. Our app detects that the actual recording is password protected and allows you to download the recording to the Confluence page. Means the recording is stored as an attachment in the Confluence page. Simple and secure. When you have these restricted password protected videos, our app allows you to start the download. You will see the progress bar. And this is a one hour meeting, so the download is super quick. Please be aware that your administrator can limit the available storage for Confluence pages. So maybe in the initial setup, this should be adjusted and increased so that you can also store longer recordings in the Confluence page as well. You can see now the link changed from a Zoom link to the link direct to the Confluence page and the direct to the attachment. And now you can do the same like with the stream videos. You can create the chapters and you have absolutely the same functionality. From a consumer perspective of the video, same experience. You can also have multiple recordings in one Confluence page. This is for tutorials, onboardings or manual, super interesting. To summarize it, Zoom recordings are embedded in the Confluence page and it works with and without password protected recording. You can use a direct connection to the Zoom account or simple the recording link via copy and paste. Overall, it works perfectly for all kinds of meetings. Employee onboardings, manuals or company updates. There are many different use cases for that. So we use it also for interviews, for example. So when somebody has a Zoom interview with another person and then highlight all the crucial parts in the recording, it makes it much easier for the next person who needs to work with the information. At the end, the Zoom recordings allow an additional efficiency layer or aspect for your meeting. And you don't need to discuss the same topic in every meeting again and again because recordings are now sexy. What? Why should you use Zoom for it? So yeah, you can use other tools, but hey, Zoom is well known. Everybody knows how to use it, can share the screen and in most of the cases also find the mute button. And you don't need additional software or something like that. That's good for experts, but if you want to have a solution for every employee in the company, take Zoom and our app and Confluence. I promised in the beginning to talk about do's and don'ts for Zoom recording. So let's start with the do's. Please carefully choose what to publish. So make use of the permission possibilities in Confluence and the password protected recordings from Zoom. Structure your recording with highlights. Nobody wants to watch the 90, 60 or 30 minutes recording when only these five minutes are important. Point the watcher to the important part. 
make your life easier in the recording, in the meeting, and stop and resume the recording when you have a longer break. So 15 minutes watching empty chairs makes no sense. And if you forgot it uh, once in the recording, you can create a chapter around it. For trainings or education sessions, make a rehearsal because this will improve your live session and allows you to use this recording of the live session for a broader audience. Often trainers do live trainings and then they share a different professional recording training. I like it more when the live session and the recording are the same. I feel a little more individual served when I get the same recording of the session where I attended. And it saves a lot of time for the trainer too. It's important to publish the recording as soon as possible after the meeting. Nobody wants to watch Zoom recordings from a meeting which happened two months ago. It's like an old newspaper. But by the way, what is a newspaper? And yes, please, avoid the classic. Meetings are recorded but never shared. But this is already a don't and we are in the middle of the don'ts now. Share your recordings quickly and take a couple of minutes direct after the meeting to create the Confluence page, create the chapters and share it. Your audience will love it, really. Don't try to be a director of the recording in the meeting. Focus on the meeting and don't destroy the flow. The chapters in your five minute post-production will allow you to focus on the meeting instead of clicking start, stop, pause, start, stop, pause. And it's also disturbing. Don't record every meeting. Yes, it's a nice functionality, but use it smart. And share your recordings where people can collaborate with each other, like a Confluence page. So this gives you the central hub for all follow-up and project uh, and for the project progress. I hope you enjoyed this small tutorial. Please subscribe for more videos from us. Thanks for watching. Have a great one. And hey, share your experience with Zoom recordings in the comments. Thank you very much and cheers.